have a quorum for a workshop? I asked the same question, and I'm not sure. Where's Larry? We're not there. Uh, so just the two of us, please? Somebody pulled up in the parking lot. I Did think, they, they, I think it was Jay, but I'm not. No, no Jay's not. Wasn't Jay? Jay's in the parking Well, somebody's parking in one of your board members' Jay's spots. making trash cans. <laughs> okay. Big black car? Thank you, Your show, I think. Mr. Thacker. Uh, tonight we're going to give you an update on the um, Triple F High School at Boggy Creek. Um, and we'll talk a little bit, um, I think, once we get into the presentation about uh, where we are budget-wise from preliminary numbers and maybe a few of the options that we have to look at and for consideration from the board. With that, I'll turn it over. Uh, uh, just a little. As Clyde said, we're going to bring you an update from the last workshop we had showing the progression we have made on on the uh, starting to assemble the buildings and we've started a quick look on the exterior of the building to give you and see if we're on the right track for what we're looking at in the aesthetics we're also tracking the cost as we go along and, and remember these are all preliminary costs based on square footage on the plan we don't have yet so it's they're kind of loose at this time and we but we're going to monitor them as we go along with that, I'll turn it over to the architects. So, like John said, really want to focus on the classroom buildings and a lot of the exterior and the aesthetic. You kind of see where we are in the direction that we're going for the, ar the architecture design of it. Um, we also want to talk about the site plan and just kind of give a recap. It hasn't changed a whole lot, but just to kind of uh, reinforce where we are with that. Um, and then once we get through all that, we'll talk about costs and kind of where we are from a schematic design cost standpoint. Um, before we get into the presentation, just like I did last time, I think it's important to kind of reiterate and focus on these are the things that we're hearing from you all as far as what the objectives are, what the goals are. I think some of the things to take note of, you know, 21st century collaborative learning. I think that's one of the big priorities to make sure we got that in this project and the classrooms are, are in a new design classroom building and they're accommodating all these, these ways of learning. Um, we also know that these, these uh, academic programs uh, that are addressed, like known as Medical City, so having some CTE programs like uh, robotics and biomedical and these things I think were important too, incorporating those into the project. Um, large adaptive spaces for testing, that's one thing we're looking at now, you know, in the auditorium and, and the media center and other places too about, you know, where can we get the most bang for a buck and most adaptable spaces for learning and testing as well. Uh, and again, an adaptive learning media center, that's one thing we looked at last time we were here was animation fly through of what the media center could look like. Um, shared facilities, uh, larger dining gym spaces, and then student capacity, we were planning for 3,000 as what, one of the goals for the project as well. So just to I kind of a quick it. question, Dr. Aikes, yeah. uh, probably you. Um, the late known of Medical City needs, have we started reaching out to any of those people at all to see what they, what they would be looking for and what we could help? do in this school? I know we've been to schools to look at other what other schools have done, but have we talked to them? What we've done, uh, Mr. Thacker, is kind of backwards by design, look at the industry that is up in that area, and then uh, go back to uh, where, that, where that kind of connects with uh, UCF and Valencia. So making sure that we know the industries that are there, then making sure we've connected strongly with uh, the programs that are at UCF and with Valencia to make sure that we vertically aligned that way back into the high school. Uh, once this program design is uh, solidified and we're assured of what programs will be in there, uh, then we start to reach out and make connections with those businesses and entities. So uh, right now we need to uh, we needed to make sure that we were solid on what uh, programs were going to be in there if we could afford to put in there. So we aligned it with uh, industry and with UCF. Just a quick comment, and I talked a little bit about it at the last <coughs> meeting, and I know you, you may get to it, but I just want to make sure my position is clear on this. <clears throat> the larger gymnasium space is not a priority for me. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I know Mr. Wheeler will disagree with me on it, 
Uh, but if I have to spend money on classroom space or gymnasium space, um, I've got to stretch this dollar as far as I can. And so as far as I'm concerned, that's not a key priority for me guys. Um, I'm not saying we do away with it, but if, if we're talking about saving money there to spend it somewhere else on a different campus or something else. We had a conversation yeah. at the last time. I'm just pointing out. Is, is this Jay's the larger gymnasium or is this the one we had last? Because you were comfortable. This is the one we had uh, all along. This is not the three court. This, this isn't Jay's gymnasium. No. What's that? No. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It is larger than uh, Liberty, but it is not Mr. Wheeler's gymnasium. It's just. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure. Jay's not even here. I just want to make sure that the board that the board understands where I am on that. No, no, no. I don't disagree. I thought yeah. we, that's why I just got confused on what larger was here. If we were, yeah. if we, yeah, I, just, well, I just saw it and it was identified as one of our objectives. So I just yeah. want to make sure that I, I don't want to build the Amway Center. Well, at some point today, um, and I hope Calvin gets here. He's, he's on his way. I'd like to talk about that 3,000 capacity because we're going to, I think we're going to run into some money issues too. And I know we sat around here at one of the original workshops and kind of said 3,000. Somewhere in my mind, I didn't think we were kind of agreeing to it at that point and see if this really, it's awfully big. You want to do 5,000? Well, <laughs> so if we're going to do, if we're yeah, gonna if do we great, maybe we just build one high school with 15,000 kids. <laughs> you know, some, as long as it's called Osceola High School. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, to that point, I mean, we talked. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to go down a rat hole where we redesign everything we got. I understand, uh, but I think maybe a simplistic way to look at this is when Liberty was built for the 2200. Uh, 2200 capacity. Yeah, so let's just say 2500 student stations. It was done for 56 or 58 million dollars 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Our budget, and we'll get into the budget, but our budget today is roughly $65 million, realizing it's 10 years later. That would more than take care of building Liberty today. It'd say again, how many kids is Liberty? Uh, 25. 25. 30. I'm okay, because I didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's close enough. Where we are is we're looking to build a bigger high school, mm -hmm. a 3,000 student station high school, and that's probably where at least at this point in time, we're having some budget issues. We're at schematics, so a lot of what we're doing square footage wise is still fluid. We have the ability to stretch or retract, decide do we want a big, bigger, bigger gym or do we want to get a couple more. You know, there's a lot of way to go yet. And this is a good time to make those. Yeah, right. Right. But, but just, just to I'd the just point, like to readdress that one and, you know, just bless it. Or, that's what we're here for. Right. right. So, you know, and, and we've got a plan um, as we go forward, you know, because here's what you want to do. You want to do this now. You don't want to get to the bid sure. and then be right. saying, okay, now I'm going to value engineer because right. when you value engineer, you're going to get 50 cents on the dollar. Sure. If you build a plan in now, you're going to get what you're paying for. So that's why we need to just keep in mind, you know, develop everything we're looking for in terms of a 21st century school and what the school district wants, but at the same time, be cognizant of the fact that you have a budget and we work the two together. Right. And just so you guys know, and I can't speak for these guys, but I suspect we're on the same page. Don't, this isn't a negative. This is the progression of our conversation and this is now, you know, we've laid out all the dreams and the hopes and the wishes and you guys have run with that and now it's where we have to start getting really honest and really real to say okay this is what it is this is what it's going to going to cost us and oh by the way we can't afford that i know you guys know that you deal with this all the time but i just want to make sure you know that certainly what i'm not saying and i don't think what anyone is saying is that you're going down the wrong path it's just it's time to tighten the conversations up and be very purposeful about what the end result is going to be now Dr. Riggs, how many students at Gateway and Osceola High School? Um, Osceola High School has got to be close to 2,900. How many at Gateway? Bronner got it right here. Oh, Bronner. What's Osceola, Bronner? So you got... But it was built for 25. That's what I'm... That was, get the two numbers. What did you say? So it's 27 with like 40 portables or something, or 20 or whatever it is. Yeah. I know I was exaggerating a little bit, but so you've already got these high schools built for 22, 2,500 kids with all these portables on. 
I don't like I don't like this. I'm gonna be honest. This that three thousand disturbs me a little bit. However, when you're talking about getting some sort of value out of the land that we own, the structures that we're gonna build, in the current situation that we're in, it, it may have to be that number. Well, and just so you guys know, three thousand doesn't really bother me, and and I'm glad to talk through all that sure, with you when sure, we get sure. to that point in time. Ideally, no, we don't want it. But when we think about what we have to do and how we've got yeah, to stretch the at. land, the dollar, the space, and what we're wanting to do at that school, Absolutely. I think there's definitely going to be some programming concerns that uh, Dr. Aikes and everyone's going to have to work through. But that number is not one that just totally scares me, just so you know. Because in reality, as just pointed out, we're pretty much operating at that Yeah, we got 2,900 at Osceola High School. But the problem is the 2,900 is on 2,500. Oh my yeah. God, it's the 3,000 all of a sudden 3,500 with 2,500. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's, 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 that's yeah, my yeah. concern. And I think that's going to be a, a, a conversation we're going to have to continue to have going forward to make sure that we are, if, if we go this route, we're building for what we think that future is going to look like and that we hold our line in the future. Yeah. And when Rhonda or Clyde or anyone comes to us and said, hey, this is what we need to do, they know that we're not looking to put more than that many students on that one campus. So. And, and we go into this at, towards the end. It's, it breaks it down a little more in that level of detail. So we do have some stuff. I kind of want to get through first okay, about so, some other site plan design right. work. Um, again, just to reiterate, we're with the site plan. Um, it's really more or less an evolution of what you all saw last time. Uh, one of the one of the big changes that occurred since the last time is we realized that the traffic light is actually located on Nelly Road, not we met, Fish Camp. We met with the county Tuesday, Wednesday last week, yeah. um, and did not. I mean, the preliminary with them was the traffic light was going to be on Fish Camp. Come to find out when we met last time, Fish Camp's a dirt road. They're not going to put the traffic light there. They're going to put it at Nelly. So we had to make a little bit of a traffic shift there. Really, I mean, some of this, this, this light has shifted over towards the west, and more of their attention was built around here, which, if anything, is more of a buffer between the, the neighborhood around the, yep. the northeast side. So it kind of helps us out in that regard. But still the same concept of having a lot of our core buildings up front, a nice courtyard space, and then three uh, three story classroom buildings. And all of the athletics are all kind of grouped in this sort of complex area. The other thing we're attempting to do as we develop the site plan is make sure that we're spending high school dollars for high school construction. And what I mean by that is, if you remember, we also master planned it for the middle school. <coughs> and, and it's still here, but that master, that master plan had a road. It's a smart one. It had a loop road all the way yeah. around and came back in. Well, we don't want to build all of that loop road now. It's just going to be way too much money. So we're just building a little. Uh, service drive. Yes, we're going to have to tear that out when we come and build the middle school five, ten years down the road, but that little bit is going to save us hun triple hundreds of thousands of dollars of building that, that loop road. Any comments or any questions on the site plan? Okay. Looks good. Um, so the next thing we want to do is get into the classroom building concepts, and this was something we had presented to Dr. Aikes in the group uh, last week. Um, before we got into the actual concepts, one of the things we reiterated was where we left programming. When we had been programming back in December, we did a whole presentation on kind of a spectrum of 21st century design, uh, like a real big range about different, how far to take it, essentially. Um, and we came up with, based working with the, the group, was here are the things we liked about it, here are the things that we didn't like. Here's how we, you know, we wouldn't use the, the building this way, we would use this. And the, the, the takeaways were, you know, very receptive to kind of these flexible, adaptable spaces that encourage 21st century and collaboration. Um, the, the one thing we took away was we wanted to make sure that these extended learning zones, which are more or less flexible, collaborative um, uh, flex spaces within the, within the building, we wanted to make sure that they, they were still sized as a 900 square foot classroom. And the reason for that is it gives us the most flexibility. So down the road, if they're not using it for that reason, they could come back and make it a classroom if they wanted to. And it, again, it gives them the most flexibility to work it in and the most adaptability from the project. So these are the kind of the guidelines that we had going into the classroom design and how to use those spaces and how to organize it. So what we did is we came up with three different ideas. And they're not set in stone in any regard, but what they are are three different ways to organize those extended learning zones within the classroom building. So i just give you a, an idea here. The, the red boxes on each scheme, and this is the first floor, second floor, third floor for this scheme. The red box on all these schemes is the extended learning area. Um, so in this scheme, we call it the learning courtyards idea, or learning courtyards concept. And the concept here is that in 21st century design, learning occurs everywhere. 
And we want to make sure to utilize some of these exterior spaces as extensions of the labs or extension of classroom spaces. So what we have here is these yellow boxes, which you can see here, are the, the um, CTE labs. So this could be a robotics or a biomedical lab program. And we remember hearing from the board that you know, these lab programs might be important parts of the project. There might be focuses or draws for the school to highlight as important parts of the classroom building. So the concept here was let's make these lab spaces kind of very nice magnets or draws within the building and even use exterior courtyard spaces to feed off of that and be extensions of the classroom building. Um, the red boxes that you can see here, again, these are the CTE labs, or sorry, the uh, uh, extended learning zones. They're located on a corner space, so you get the most use out of them. They touch a lot of classroom and science labs, and they're, they're centrally located. Um, that was the idea here. We got some feedback from Dr. Rakes and his group already about uh, some of these, so um, we won't go into that, but it, it, just kind of curious, um, what do you all think about the first scheme? Any feedback? We looked at the, there's three schemes. We definitely feel like we can make this one work. Uh, it's got a really nice roof on the first, at the second floor there that's a green roof uh, that Patrick and them kind of designed in there. Uh, I think this one has a lot of potential and is definitely a maybe all the way around considering uh, the budget issue. So this was the second uh, middle of the road for what it would cost us to build it. Uh, we could reposition some of the uh, collaborative spaces like we said we thought this one has a lot of potential um, and after we sat down and decided kind of picked out where we could put each different program we could definitely make this work and it would look good there yeah one of the things that we talked about potentially was because you know there might be supervision supervision issues with some of these smaller courtyard spaces that we're creating and one of the ideas was if this building could actually mirror and you could put these spaces more as, as patios or, or fenced in areas that could be used as extension of labs it would kind of alleviate the issue with having supervision issues for the for the school and for the uh, faculty. So that well, was one of the things that we took. For the board's, uh, uh, you know, knowledge, what you're talking a green roof. What are we talking about? So, so the, the idea here is again, this is the first floor, second floor. This space here would be over, directly over these larger mm -hmm. lab spaces. So we could potentially build in um, the ability to make that a green roof, where you could have a thickened edge slab concrete structure with some green uh, vegetation growing on it. Mm -hmm. So the idea is actually a physically green roof there. Okay. Um, the other thing it could be is just an opportunity to have some windows in so you could put photovoltaic panels on it. So the, the idea is to use it as an educational tool within the building. So not just as a roof that you look down onto, it's actually, it's an opportunity to teach kids about sustainability or it's a extension of an art pad. You could put your art on the second floor, the students could come out to that space and it could be kind of, they could do you know pottery or something out into the in a garden space. So the idea is kind of using the building that way. Gotcha. I don't know if I follow that, to be honest yeah, with you. Well, no, we would we'll make sure you don't have yeah. Is this Woodstock High School or what? <laughs> <laughs> this one was the uh, second floor. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you did. That's that's pretty pretty good. Good. Be careful yeah, about yeah. that touch. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> uh, if that was the second floor, this would be a roof of the first floor outside of it. Okay. So that could be an outside courtyard accessible from this classroom. Got it. So when you would have an outside space equal to the size of the classroom that they could go out and work in and come back. Yeah. And Makes we'd have several sense. of those throughout the right. the, the campus that would okay. allow that to happen. Biology labs or plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now again, they like what they're using. Clarence, they liked them. They were yeah, we saw some of this in Orlando. And and it would work yeah. nice for a biology lab where you could have some the growth outside and an art lab with an outside. And in, in, in the nice. last board meeting, we did hear that there was, you know, a desire to have either photovoltaic or some kind of alternative energy uh, concepts incorporated into it. So this might be an option where this is one of the zones where we highlight alternative energy solutions like EV panels or something else too. So that's it's just kind of our solution to that. Well, I think part of the discussion was that the parking <coughs> lots, you know, covering the parking lots but with solar panels mm -hmm. uh, or using the rooftops, you know, with solar panals. Yeah. Am I not? Am I, I yeah, think that's absolutely discussed. correct. Yeah. 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 So that was the first one. Um, the second concept we came up with is called the flexible gallery concept. And the idea here is we know that one of the, the one of the key goals for the project was it has large adaptive spaces within the project. So either used for testing or for presentation spaces or some other kind of form where you can have a large adaptable flex space. So our concept here was all of these red boxes, which are the extended learning areas, would be grouped together on each floor. And what that would allow us to do is you could have operable partitions between each, each of these four rooms, open it all up, and you could have one 
you know, 5,000 square foot space on each floor that could be used for testing if they wanted to, they could close it off, use it for testing, it could be used for presentations, uh, it could be used for banquet halls, but the idea is it's kind of a multi, multi-use space that you can really get the most advantage and most bang for your buck as far as the space that we're incorporating. What we're just trying to do is show the flexibility. I know Patrick's talking about testing, and I know we talked to Dr. Aix, and they don't know that it would really work that way. But just just to reiterate, your primary testing is the media center. We showed you that last time. We've got three 1,000 square foot testing labs off the media center. You don't go through the media center. They have their own entrances. And then we're still talking about the auditorium as your secondary place for testing. But this is just another option. You can do a lot of different things with that 5,000 square feet. And one of them is, if you had to use it for testing, you could. It might be only your third option, but it's there. Or like, like Patrick said, I mean, you could have you know, lectures in there. You could do a lot of different things. So, Tori, you kind of get a concept of this is two of the kind of prototypes that we've used. If you think of this as Liberty, the way the buildings are lined up, but it incorporates the OHS flow between the uh, wings, if you will. Does that make sense? In other words, you literally can go from one uh, wing yeah. to the next, yeah. like OHS, right. without going back downstairs. Uh, we probably would move these. We like this idea, but we would move them into a different location. I, I think there's merit to the way Patrick and them have uh, tried to come up with that. But literally, uh, it's the combination of Liberty and OHS together is, is the way we've moved. Uh, I really wanted the walkways in front of the building, but since I'm $10 million over budget, I think John's about ready to <laughs> say that I don't think I'm going to get those walkways in front of that building. So, um, but that's the idea. Dirt. That's the combination. This <laughs> is, walk on the dirt. John, this is the least, this is the most, least expensive to build the way we'd lay it out. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, this one and the first one are, are, the, are more efficient. This one's a little bit more efficient than the first one. The third one is a little... Less and, and we're adding in that cross corridor because we're we're drawing in the whole idea of collaborative education and everybody working together. And it's much easier to get from point A to point B through the middle of the building than to go out, down the stair, cross, back, back up, up, and yeah. over. So that's the reason for that cross corridor. Like, uh, it also like happens to be a good economics it's, saver as it's well. It's OHS. If you yeah. think of the way OHS, you, you move from one building to the next. Yeah up top or the second floor that's the way this would be except for uh, Joe would figure out a way to kind of encapsulate that towards usable condition space okay yeah and I for what it's worth I agree with that that is the way it should operate so I like that as opposed to Liberty coming up going mm -hmm. down yeah. uh, the third option the, the, the final scheme that we're looking at is called the idea box and the concept behind this is as you walk into the building, you have the, the red zone, again, is extended learning, and it's kind of a fishbowl approach. We walk into the building, and it's a right, right smack dab in the middle of the building. It's kind of the center of the focus wherever you are in the building. You can see the space going on. So the idea is that it be all transparent glass along the side here. So when you walk in, you can see all the technology, collaboration, activity going on in the space. It becomes a focus point internally within the <coughs> building space. Um, the other nice thing about it is the location of these is, is, is so centrally located that it's going to touch the most educational classroom spaces. It's, it's because right in the middle, it really touches all the science and, and, and uh, classroom spaces. And the configuration, the building type, uh, allows for uh, windows in every single classroom, space, which, is, which is a benefit as well. Um, the third floor steps back a little bit, so you can see the 3D, it steps back a little bit, which helps create more of a pedestrian scale, the architecture, a little bit. Um, but that's the idea here. Um, and again, this is looking at building efficiencies and constructability. It's probably the least efficient out of all of them just because of the shape of the building. Um, but the goal was to try and put these three ideas in front of the group and see what did you like and didn't like about each one, not necessarily pick one or the other. Um, I think some of the feedback we got was that the, the fishbowl approach wasn't going to be as highly utilized as we thought as we thought it was going to be, and that was the, the, the feedback that I heard it, last week. Isn't that sort of the approach at Harmony, which none of them like? Correct. Right. Okay. That was what we heard too. That's why he used the term fishbowl. Yeah, I understand. But at the same time, that's the approach that we're taking with this new design a little bit more and wanting to say we want the right people at the school that would ad adapt mm. and utilize the space as opposed to maybe what was at Harmony, which was, you know, this is how you've always delivered education, this is what you've always done, and now here's the space. Remember the conversation, I know at least what I'm looking for is, 
you know, we, we want to build this new way of constructing our buildings, and then we want to go across our district and say to high school teachers, mm -hmm. we want the people that want to operate in this type of space and can utilize it effectively for 21st century learning and get away from what we've done in the past. So to me, just because it didn't work in Harmony doesn't mean we shouldn't do it here, and just because some people didn't like it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. Patrick, can you go back to that first one? I get that, but I'll tell you what I what I see at Harmony is now it's just being utilized as a classroom. It's just basically a big classroom with windows. Uh, it, it says nothing about 21st century learning. It's just a big classroom with, mm -hmm. with all windows. So if, if we're going to design and we're going to staff the right way, it's got to be designed differently than that. I don't, I don't think the reason it doesn't work is because we don't have the right people. I think the reason it doesn't work is because the design is flawed. And that may be the case. Yeah. I just don't want to abandon an idea of what it is we envision our next Absolutely. campus looking yeah, like yeah. just because we didn't get it right sure. in the first iteration of it. Sure. Yeah, and, and we, we've done uh, you know other high schools that incorporate, they kind of make that jump, make that leap from what they're used to doing for the past 20, 30 sure. years to this new, new kind of model. And usually what we find is that you're not going to get every single teacher on board with it. Usually there's, it, it's a hybrid approach where you have either half the teachers and it, it changes over the years, but usually when you first implement it, you have half the, the faculty who are totally on board with it, and then you have the other half who say, no, I want to have my classroom that looks like this because that's what I'm used to for sure, the past 20 sure. years. So usually what we try and do is incorporate, whatever you come up with is there's some classroom or some part of the building that still has that, that you know, rectangular building that they're used to, but incorporate you know, a hybrid approach where you have some high-tech collaborative spaces to incorporate also. So did you want to talk about the first game? Tim, I think that your point is well taken. I think that you've got to feel, figure out that happy medium there where you're, uh, you don't build the classroom, the school without any walls right, again, right. where you're saying, well, this is the best way to do it. They should be collaborating, but you try to create a space by which you know that it could change to the need of the, the school, but also create the spaces like I think Patrick and Joe have done here where they're, they're interdispersed throughout the school, uh, and it kind of is a, a happy medium, if you will. Uh, because in our area, the exterior is so much more utilized than any place else in the country. I mean, so much they will take those students outside. So the interdispersing of those red collaborative spaces that Patrick has designed there, I think if we think that through and put them in the right spot, I think it'll create the right the right uh, areas. So for the me, the first or the second one, money wise, is the best way to go about it for me. Thank you. What is the big difference between the third one and the quote unquote idea box and the first one with how those spaces are set up? I would say the, the, the big difference here, I think what we try to focus on was, was how can we take the most advantage of the exterior spaces? So again, this would be your courtyard spaces here, <coughs> and now we're creating, there's a, a balcony here, and you're creating smaller scale courtyard spaces that relate to the labs and the classroom and the art labs. Um, this one is more of an internal focus. It's kind of introverted. It's looking at, okay, here's, we're going to look at just the inside of the building about how the space can open up to it. Um, but they're, they're both kind of uh, decentralized. I guess you could say, you know, this scheme, they're all right in one yeah. spot. These ones, it says, okay, let's disperse them all a little bit. This one is more dispersed than this one is because these are back to back where you can have a double lab space. Um, these are more dispersed throughout, throughout the space. So. I mean, I need my instructional people to yeah. say which one is. Yeah. Right. And, and that's, that's kind of where we are right now, I think. We're, we're working with them to get some the feedback that we need to tell you both. And I think that uh, we could come back uh, at the next meeting with um, uh, looking at both the first and the second one. Uh, I'm, I, it goes back to the budget. I just don't think that we could get into the third one uh, only because of the budgetary constraints and everything else we got to do. So um, uh, I think that if you consider the combination of the Liberty OHS model, which is the middle one, I, I'm the the top one. I got to tell you, is kind of growing on the team as far as what we could do with it. I see a lot there's, of potential. There's a lot more potential. Oh, I see a lot to, of potential to the, for that. One, to the first the one. Which one? The top one because the top one. what you see is kind of like when we go out there. We went to Liberty the other day. The kids are outside for an English class doing a scavenger hunt. And anytime you can create that situation, the teachers will utilize it. The kids mm -hmm. just love going outside because it kind of gives them a change of environment. I like the topic. We're going to have to have a recess policy for high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes. 
Uh, we're going to have them for the board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I can have a discussion with K5 if you want me to. So, I think the next step is, can I continue to get feedback? It sounds like we're probably going to the first or second one. And the next step is, these are all conceptual, kind of bubble diagrams, essentially. Um, the next step is to get a more hard line that we can look at some renderings to see exactly what that space could look like and what it could be um, from a kind of rendering standpoint, too. So that's what I like to do in the next It doesn't one. mean anything, really. I just like the first one. You know, but the, they're you, spread out. I just have a, a good feeling about it. You got when you're looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but when you it, visualize it, it you you've got to visualize how it's going to appeal to you aesthetically yeah. when it's sitting on that campus. Let, and, let me ask this though, because I think you know, Mr. Weishar brought up a great point: and the the accessibility from the floors. Do you lose that on the first one? You know, you were just talking about walking, even if you're on the second floor, being able to stay on the you second floor. You still have the internal yeah. circulation across. You still across. have a, a, a hallway all the way across, but it's it's more in the back than it was kind of in the middle or in the front here. Okay. Um, so, in, in each, and really in all three of these, you could probably have the option of doing this exterior balcony. Um, but in this scheme, because the hallway's in the back, you probably would want to keep this just from a supervision standpoint so you can really see what's going on. Building. Okay. And the stairwells on the front side of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So the students would either move up and down on the stairwells, or they would go around to circulate through the back. But that's where all the classrooms are anyway. So it'll be. It, it would be I mean, natural. you could potentially, if you're on the second floor, you could go all the way across on the back. Yes. yes. On the yes. second floor. Yes. Draw your hand where they could, where the kids traverse back and forth. On the back. These would be like a breezeway right here. This is an exterior space. You walk out of the building. This is the breezeway. And you go back in the building again. Well, kind of so, like what's right there, blocks. I think, on the I picture. I guess I think of OHS, yeah, it seems like yeah, see, the there they are right there, Clarence. It, it, it is. So this is not OHS. Well, no, but there's classrooms on, on both sides. <laughs> yeah, two classrooms. Three classrooms from here all the way across, all the way across, and all the way down. See the picture? The Look at the left see, this is, picture. This is OHS right here. I'm walking hmm. out of... The one, this is the corner. This would look just like OHS. I've turned the corner. Now I'm getting ready to go to the next wing. Okay. I go across that walkway and into the next wing. So that little light blue right above your hand, those are classrooms? Yes. yes. So this okay, is I thought that was the wall. I thought that was the That's walkway. So the walkway's the clear part in between them there. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I'm with you now. I thought. Yeah, this would be like an example of an exterior breezeway that would connect the buildings. I, would, I just, I, I got you. All right, so like I said, we'll continue to kind of work through that. When we come back in, in March, I think we'll have more 3D renderings of what some of these could look like and you can get a better feel for it. Um, the next thing we want to talk about was the exterior design concept and where we are. And again, we're still in the middle of schematic design, so it's all a process and we're kind of evolving it. But just to give you an idea of, of what we've started, what we started with. One, one of the things we heard, this is not our product, this is uh, Valencia College of Lake Nona. And one of the things we had heard from the group was this was an example to look at as far as the aesthetic and kind of the style of architecture and the look of it that we were, were thinking about. So it matches was, the area. It so. matches the area. So what we said was we're not going to just copy this architecture because we want, I think, sure. our school to have our own character and wants to do its own thing. We also can't afford to do that that building. I mean, it's it's just a, it's a higher level building, higher education building, and we can't afford all the curtain wall and that kind of brick. But what we tried to do is say, okay, what are the three things that this building and this architecture is about? And I think the three things that we that we know is that it's about connection to nature and having this transparency. On this project, we had this very large U-shaped courtyard space, not unlike you saw on the lot the first game that we just presented. And, and all the spaces attached to it in this atrium are all glass and transparent. So wherever you are in the space, you can look out and you can see this really nice great room space. They called it a uh, nice kind of uh, green courtyard area. So that was one concept that we tried to integrate. The other thing that's really important is the texture and materiality. We use this brick pattern as kind of a fabric kind of stitching pattern to the architecture. And we use a lot of layering with the brick to kind of give it up some more depth and, and expression to the finish. So. Um, all of this is based on a Pacific Northwest vernacular. That was how we started the process, and that's kind of how it evolved. It was sort of a you know, Pacific Northwest meets Florida kind of style of architecture. Um, the relationship of spaces was also very important, and that's why you look at the space and you can see you know, there's, there's some glass towers that kind of pop up, and they, they focus your attention about where the iconic entries are. Um, and they focus, in this, in this product, it was all about this atrium that ran to the building, because that atrium connects the courtyard space, the classrooms, and all of the collaborative spaces within it. So the idea here was, you know, this, you kind of know what's important in building right when you look at it. So those are the three things that we thought about when we said, okay, let's let's consider these three things and how it can apply to our project. And again, this is just some quick images that we've done. 
this will be the gem for the entry here. Where you can see we're, we're picking up on some of the brick accents, a lot of the layering. You have some of the, again, some of this kind of uh, this glass tower elements to emphasize where the entries are. And that was what we're trying to do here is kind of come up with some some ideas about how to incorporate these uh, these concepts. <coughs> Looks great. So the auditorium space, this would be, again, picking up the same idea with the columns and exposed structure and some steel beams, a lot of layering. Again, there'll be some brick. We're not going to have the whole building in brick, but it's going to be select areas to make sure we're staying on budget. You can have some blended brick on the project with some reveals and, and layering. The Global Resource Center entry, again, picking up on some of the same, same concepts that you see based on the project here. And the last one was the administration wing. Again, we, we know that we emphasize kind of important parts of the building and entryways with, with the glass and with the tower and the exposed steel. So we're trying to pick up on some of those same things and apply it to this project so it has its own unique flair to it. Just from my standpoint, go back three. Um, the fewer those big old flat walls we have, I like the better. It starts to look like modular and portable to me. Just my opinion. Well, he's got the layering. And then no, the no I like to... I love the next two. It's this one when I see that. Yeah. But you gotta have the for the side of the auditorium. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and the, the auditorium is usually the hardest building on a high school campus to <laughs> make look at it. It's so tall and it's just so large. Right. But um, just like we did on this project, you know, we use a lot of layering and, and, and different heights of parapet walls to kind of break down the scale of it. I mean, this is a, a three-story building, but it doesn't feel as large as it really is because we have layering to it. So. We can do some creative things yeah, with tilt wall where you have, yeah, sure. you, you mean, you're going to build a tilt wall anyway. You might as well, if you can layer the, the panels, it gives you that extra depth and it picks up on what we did on this project and applies it to here, but it's still economical. It's not adding a lot of cost to the project. So. And Dr. Ames keeps challenging on this one, too. He's, yeah. he's not <laughs> well, exactly and, and I was going to say that the auditorium actually is turning out the, the way we're designing it. Uh, it could be broken down in a number of different forms. Which is really going to help its overall look. It's not good. you're not going to have a 60 foot high wall going 500 feet. You know, we've got some uh, options on on how to break that down and and uh, you know I'm fine. I just the auditorium really like piece versus just, the stage the piece versus of... the music piece and, and how we yeah, break out those out long today. expanses of yeah. walls. I mean, I love to look at that. And hopefully, there's not a lot of kids and babies center. coming. I was saw that thing. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> and the I was like, hopefully, there's not a lot of kids oh, and babies yeah. coming to the <laughs> Yeah, let's hope. Well, you have a, you have a free case for so uh, my quick comment is I think you guys from where I sit you're nailing what it was that I was wanting to see and you're right on track and now let me go to you guys meaning Clyde and John um, how freaked out are you that we're getting what we're talking about from a budget standpoint <laughs> well, John you want to pick up? <laughs> maybe I should turn to our finance no, people in the back of the room there. It's the the look isn't really driving the cost up too much. Uh, the storefront glass is just a little more than a tilt wall is, so we're not paying a premium for where we're putting the glass in. Uh, it's it's size that's killing us on the uh, the, the cost. Uh, the cost per square foot is in line with what is going up, or a little lower what we're estimating than. Orange just uh, new high school came in at two hundred and fourteen dollars a square foot. Uh, on uh, that bid, we're under that in our <coughs> estimate, but uh, it's not the the look they're going after that's driving the price. I think we can achieve this type of look. On the tilt wall, there's several ways to get that brick look on there without having put a brick veneer on the front sure. of it. It would, it would be a thin brick inlay, so the brick is actually cast into the concrete. Yeah, sure, right. We do it all the time. Okay. And I was just asking because I want to make sure if we're kind of pacing along here. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> well, great to right. see yeah. exactly what we want, uh, it, but it's it, a whole other thing. And I'll point out, the three of us just spent two or three days in Tallahassee talking with our legislature and bragging on how uh, fiscally responsible we are with our dollar. And I know that this board doesn't want to change that, but we also want to make sure we get one shot to do this right. Um, we want to do it right, but we want to make sure that we're incredibly good stewards of the dollars that are entrusted to us while we're doing that. Right. And, and if we use the state's cost per student station for a new high school for when we're going to build this, that would be $110 million. So we're well below that. We're well below the state recommended cost for the new high school. And, and, and the, way, the way you get this and stay on budget is, so this is the administrative <coughs> building right here. It's essentially a four-sided rectangle. All four sides aren't going to look like this. I mean, we're going to focus on the front door. It's going to get the nice brick and the accents and the glass. 
But as you walk down the corridor, you might just have a reveal or, or you know, a, a window, a punched window. But it's going to be, we got to limit, you know, okay, where are the important parts of the building and the campus and then focus Curb the brick on there. So yeah. you might have. Sure. Exactly. So that's. So, yeah, Break it's gonna, down or further it back from where you're coming in and where, where your entry um, cost is and then and kind of break it back into you know the basic in other okay. words what you're using world yeah it's all about curb yeah. so and if I, it's what it looks like but, from, we don't want to do uh, what i would call the old west quite but yeah, exactly. but, uh, yeah. but we will we will break it down mm -hmm. as we work back Good. From, great from, job guys i just want to go real quick you're talking about the size and the budget and everything we did meet yesterday and reviewed some uh, early numbers and, and what it's looking like and um, uh, we had um, finance with us and everything um, and we feel very comfortable we can make everything happen one thing that might as we get further along these numbers um, if, if they stay hold true which I hope we're a little over or high um, we may have to push the last wing out one year that's for a funding issue but we can fund it but that's if we go to 3,000 seats that possibly one of the wings may come out and I've talked to John about that we would open the campus with I don't know 24 25 approximately 2400 stay the 2400 the, and and well, didn't we, we kind of do that at Harmony and, we, we, and Celebration where we let them run for a few years and then added a wing. Well, yeah, and, and absolutely. We yeah. could do it I mean, two years out if we didn't need the wing right away or something. Yeah. But <clears throat> that's something I think we might, as we get a little bit further in, and we get Miss Graber and her team to really analyze where we're at on everything, you know. If you do right. that, though, you build the cafeteria yeah. to size. We build the core to. So all we do is add a wing. We don't add. Well, and actually, yeah, a lot of times, would, you know, right? what Different. I would recommend we do is for the missing building, we go ahead and pour the slab for it. That way, we can use it for the casting bed, for the tilt walls, for the other buildings, and we're not pouring the casting bed and ripping it out. And then, when we get ready to build the building, we're just going from the slab up. That, that, and, and that's an option. And the other thing is normally, at least in our experience, a lot of school districts don't open their high schools with their senior class. Some don't open with juniors and seniors. So it sort of gives you an opportunity to grow into your school so that that fourth classroom building not being there is not a detriment the first yeah. couple of years. John, what's the square footage on Osceola and St. Cloud? Do you know, roughly? Like when we look at the total gross square footage, there's 400,000. Under three, yeah. three hundred. Probably right around three hundred thousand. I want to think also it's two ninety-four or something like yeah. that. That doesn't sound right. We're adding thirty-three percent space for twenty percent more kids. Figure in your portables are the two. No, I'm talking about original space. Yeah. I can get those numbers. No, that's fine. You're, 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 sure you you affirm what I was thinking I it was. <laughs> With regard to, and you may be getting there, with regard to the auditorium and the testing center and all that, what type of progress we're making in that regard? We're right now looking at different options. The first thing we did was looked at um, basically an auditorium fixed seat that had a tablet that kind of flipped up, and now you could put a laptop on it. One of the things we learned last week was that the way that they're actually going to use the testing room is it's going to have a laptop, a piece of paper, and a space for a mouse. So we're kind of moving away from any kind of tablet arm uh, fixed auditorium seating and more or less into more of a lecture hall um, seating arrangement. So we're, we're kind of doing a study now that shows what that layout could be and what it would look like and that type of furniture, but I think we're already moving away from any kind of uh, traditional tablet arm space there just because of how they're going to test and what the needs for the testing are. So a quick question would be, that's the way we're talking about testing now, um, but we've talked in the past about um, tablet utilization becoming greater and greater over time and that we're ultimately going to be getting away from more desktops, getting towards more laptops, now getting away from laptops, getting towards more tablets. Um, what is that going to look like, do you think, in the next couple few years if we're designing it for laptops and mouses? And the truth of it is no one in the world really functions with a laptop or a mouse anymore. Well, I think that... Um, Except for Clarence. The, the <laughs> migration has already taken away from the desktops and any kind of setting up any kind of permanency in the labs. I agree. We all we, we do laptops and, and they quickly are able to be reconfigured. Uh, but the space, the actual space on the desk is going to be pretty similar if you think about the square footage that, or the square inches that like Kelvin's uh, 
iPad would require there versus if I put a tablet fresh down or if I put the laptop right there, that space is still this space and I still am going to need a work area. Mm -hmm. And some students are, will still be more comfortable with uh, like the scientific calculator on some of them. So that's the space that Patrick is referring to. So uh, we're, we're looking at, at three basic options. One is the sloped floor and still uh, researching any type of seat that has a fold down back or uh, that can be reconfigured in that. Uh, we've talked about the tiered flooring where you have tiers within the auditorium uh, and how that could be reconfigured. And then we're considering what if we did a flat floor and then we looked at the height of the stage and the, all the chairs and all the tables were, were able to be reconfigured in there. How would that look? What would the acoustics and all that look at? Uh, so the team as a whole have been really, really, really digging in on that one. Uh, we're, we're, that's the one piece that we're still challenging each other to figure out how can we make this work. We know we need to make it work to the best space utilization. So, so we're, we're working through some options. So my only other comment then on that would be, um, and I think my point's pretty clear, is I don't want to design anything in the school based upon technology that we're using today. today because the truth of it is we're not going to be using it tomorrow and we're barely using it now. Even I have a, obviously a lot of tablets and I, uh, laptop, but even my laptop I'm using a trackpad, not a mouse. I understand your point though about scientific calculator or worksheet or whatever in that space, but when you said mouse it just freaked me out a little bit because I'm thinking, I mean, no student's going to be using Patrick's a mouse. Patrick's got a real big yeah. laptop, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in their real life, no student's going to be using a mouse, in my opinion. Yeah. I think Mr. Soto's a great example of how he's using his tablet at the moment. That's what... Uh, I, got, I got a mouse. To not pay attention. <laughs> to not pay I'm attention. Just 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 yeah, but, but that's, that's how computing takes place. Yeah. Yeah. So right. The, the only limitations right now on the testing is still uh, requiring the being able to test security with the iPad and all that. Sure. You know, that, that particular uh, technology is not uh, quite advanced yet. So I would really, really defer to the Daryl's uh, team on that. What, what about the power? You're figuring out ways to have power all yes, over the place? They all have power fit into the chairs. The actual yeah. chairs, yes. Nice. That's good. Thank you. Uh, just make, make sure we're, you know, we're not going to impact the, the programs and the technology that the board has expressed. They want in this school. You know, we're going to work everything we can for these get these numbers down where we need to. Okay. Thanks, Clyde. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate, I mean, the, the numbers that we're looking at, we're still we're in the middle of schematic design. So these are all kind of fluid numbers. You know, we're still evolving them. Um, the, the core buildings, like the gym and the admin, they're more more set than the other buildings are. Um, the classroom buildings right now is showing at 240,000 square, square feet. That's more of a conservative estimate at this point, um, just because we're still designing the classroom buildings. We're kind of using past prototypes and making some assumptions about that, that square footage, but I suspect that might come down a little bit as we kind of continue to evolve I'll a little more. Where but, is the, where's the media center in your uh, the global media, resource? The global resource center space. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on, Claire, um, give it a time. I just have a mouse. It allows me to get up there with the global resources. The library. <laughs> that's, media. Yeah. That's, that's where you bring your word processor. In. <laughs> so I, I think the message is, you know, we're still in schematic design. We're still evolving the plans. But at this point, we can't be in a position where we're adding more stuff, certainly, to the project, the square footage. But I think we also want to have kind of a contingency or a plan in place. And it sounds like the, the, the agreement is if we have to cut out that third building, that is probably the, the one to take out that's my what I'm hearing I guess but if we but for future build delay it. yeah yeah we would still design all three and, and then you can just what call would that out. make that number be then now it would lower it by nine million dollars so oh that is that yeah, is that's that. about the price of that the it's, building it's, would cost between nine and twelve million dollars uh, since we're going to go ahead and build the slab and probably more towards the nine million dollar range Clyde so it would get us uh, in the budget if we just didn't do the third building right now is the concern not having the dollars at the time, or is it concern using the dollars somewhere else for space reconfiguration, new wings, whatever? It's actually for um, possible land purchases out, but it's not taking all of the land purchase money we had put in the budget. Um, what it would do, it would that money would be available in the 1920 year. And we've got a land purchase that if we don't make by a certain number of years, we lose it, and we can. Now on those, it can be either a cash or an impact fee credit. Okay. 
we can do that. Okay. We have that I just didn't want to... In the mitigation agreement, it could be either. So that way... A little high uh, growth funding would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah absolutely. A little high growth funding would help. Absolutely. But those are... Let, we normally, I don't think we normally take questions, but Lee's got a question. You all care? It's just a real quick one. Because you said you're, you're fixed, you're, you're, you're more sure about the numbers for your admin and things. The cafeteria, are you planning uh, just two lunches, half the school and half the school, or three? Since we're right now, what we've students. done is we, we fought, we're following the DOE regulations regarding cafeterias, which is basically you take one third the capacity of your school in a period. So the cafeteria itself will be able to seat 950 students. Now, in addition to that, you've got your outdoor dining, yeah. which is going to, I'm not really sure about the numbers, but I'm mm -hmm. going to say 300, 350. Then we also talked about um, the courtyard and how that's going to work. The thing about the courtyard is under an inclement weather situation, you can't be outside eating in the courtyard. Um, so if but we're a... following... We're following DOE reg on the three lunch periods because if we try and feed them all in one lunch period, that has an economic impact on you. Sure. But when you add the middle school, you're having to add a fourth lunch? No. The middle school has its own dining room. Own, own dining, but share the cafeteria. The kitchen. Yeah. It's, got, kitchen. it's got its own. The, own the kitchen dining. is going to serve okay. both schools and the got middle it. schools. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, would it be serving? attached to this building? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. But we would, we has, would build think, that yeah. as an add-on. Down the road, not now. Right. Right. It's designed, to this so it's designed now. Yeah. It's built later. Yeah. And then it would just a little black outline. The, out, the little black outline right here, that's the middle school, and it connects to the kitchen. The kitchen's okay. Going to be, okay. The kitchen's the same size as it was at Liberty, okay. but it's going to serve both the middle school and, excuse me, the middle school and So there's the some savings there. High school, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and the kitchen at Liberty is serving the high school and I believe two charter schools okay. uh, also. So the food service said there would be plenty of capacity in this kitchen size to do this with them. The middle school also has its own outdoor dining. I mean, the middle school we put on there is a placeholder. We realize it's 10 years down the road, but, you know, we put uh, uh, the west side uh, K-8, which is was originally designed as a middle school. That's how we connected it. I know. I know uh, Mr. Booth and I have talked about this as well, and I'd be curious to know how the conversations are going with what the new kitchen space is actually, how big it is and how it's being set up compared to what we've done in the past, compared to what we should be doing in the future with um, new technology, some of the conversations I think Mel that, yeah, that Mel and others have planted in our, in our heads that <laughs> seem logical enough, I mean, I'll pretend to be an expert on it, but um, I don't, I, again, on this, I don't want to miss an opportunity to be um, outside of the box thinkers and innovators on how we design that space and use different type of uh, cooking implements to make sure that we're getting the same things done at a better cost. And so we I guess what's we are here? in the infancy, infancy stage of that. We have Total Design Consortium. Uh, they're getting their contract. Um, I've met with Mel. We've kind of outlined a three-step plan, which I shared with um, Food Service and Ray. Um, we kind of, for lack of a better way to say it, we interviewed Mel on what some of his ideas were. I've shared those with Ray. Everybody's on board with the ideas. Um, we have some challenges to, to figure out, um, but, but it, it, it will be moving forward. Um, next time we meet, we'll probably have a pretty good idea of where we're headed with that. We're going to do a, um, what do you call it, a survey almost with food service and Mel. He has an outline of questions that he's created and we'll be sitting down with them. I'm going tomorrow uh, with Ray and Remy. They're going to go look at a uh, cafeteria design remodel that was just done at Cypress Creek High School. Um, so we'll see what we can gather out of that. Um, but yes. I'm thinking, and I may be wrong here, but I tend to think I'm not. I think it would be smart, and I'm pointing to you because you've you've really worked a lot on this stuff. Yeah, because you're smart. <laughs> because you've worked well, on you're this wrong. stuff a lot as well with farm to school and helping yeah, advance absolutely. that and what sure, we're wanting sure. to do to, to continue to um, enhance our food service in the district. And that's not a slight on what we're doing. It's an opportunity to just improve and enhance what we're doing. So I think it would probably be smart next time we have this conversation is to have Ray and if Mel's the one doing it then I don't I mean that doesn't matter to me as much as I just want to make sure that we're looking at all pieces of it 
and you guys are our experts, and so I want to be able to look at you guys too and get your thoughts on it. But I think the, I would benefit, and I'm yeah. suspecting what intrigues me from Mr. Welch's perspective. And, and like I say, I'm not actually an expert on kitchen design or anything. Is that with the quality of the food? He's able to increase that quality by some of the techniques that they use. Now that that would certainly, I mean, from a lot of what I hear from parents in the community. And this is no slight on, on Ms. Hollenbeck, and, the, and their team has a lot of challenges. But you know, with the with the first lady's lunch program and withholding the money unless we do this and, and that yada yada yada, um, that really puts us in a bind. And only having a dollar thirty seven or something crazy for a meal means we're very limited on what we can buy. I mean, I don't want to use the word junk or trash but I mean we're buying a lot of low quality food we're buying low enough quality food that not even the kids that are allowed to get free lunches they'll bring their own lunch um, and that's not a slide on what they're doing it's just they're what they're the structure that they're working under so nonetheless if we can improve the quality of what we're doing with the kitchen design I would certainly like to see that done um, so and I don't know if what you, you your experiences with kitchen design and, and, and Mr. Welch, I don't know. Um, so it's hard for me to sit here and say, hey, definitely go and do that. Or Well, what, what we are talking about as far as what my experience has been <coughs> with the district and with Mel, this is new ground. Um, but that there's nothing wrong with that. We just need to identify what that new ground is and, and how we uh, achieve what you're looking for. Um, the kinds of things that, that Mel had talked to me about were more about things about how to save money uh, with kitchen hood and, and you know yep. putting in the right kitchen hood to save air conditioning costs, reduce that overall uh, building efficiency, if you will. Um, we talked about composting. I went over that with Ray. Um, there's a challenge with that, but she's all for it. Um, but I will definitely expand the conversation to what you guys have been talking to him about. Yeah, I think it's important, and I know he's mentioned to me some work he did for the Department of Defense and, and uh, with all of that. All I want to see is um, what our options look like, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about a school or we're talking about curriculum or we're talking about buses. Sure. None of that matters to me. I don't ever want to be of the mindset as a school district that we're doing something because it's the way we've always done it. That's just a completely unacceptable approach to me in everything that we do. Now, there are things that we know that are tried and true and tested, and it just makes really good sense. And we're doing it not because we've always done it, but because we know it's the most effective way to do it. I'm fine with that. Um, same when it comes to this particular aspect of our build is I don't want to leave it and just you know go by and us not have the conversation. Then a year sure. now from now, us go, oh, man, we never did hit on that enough, and then find out we could have done something. We're spending money on ESCOs right now which probably need to get an update on, but spending money on ESCOs right now to see if we can find additional cost savings for us as a district as well. Um, energy efficiencies are gonna be an important piece for us. Uh, new technologies are coming out that are lowering the cost for all of us and how we deliver products, services, and everything else across the board. So this, to me, is just as much of an important conversation as uh, a bus loop or anything else that we're talking about. Thank you. Just so I guess I'm clear and understand exactly what the charge is going forward. Um, we can meet the construction budget total at 75 million if we plan on building that third building two years down the road. Is that is that good with the board as we move forward? I'm sorry, say that for me again. Okay. Did you the total me? construction yeah, budget is what we've been told is 75 million. That's <coughs> all we got. Everything that all things on the table. We can meet that 75 million, but we would have to delay and pay for that third wing two years down the road as we opened up. I just want to understand that that's- Or, or to say it another way, we can't 80. build what we want for 75 million now, so right. we have the total projects 85, 85 and right. we don't have the other 10 right now. And we as the architects will continue to try and find you know, we'll fine tune that classroom building and, you know, we may find 20,000 square feet there and that'll, you know, be a balance. Um, but most probably it's not going to get to the point. It'd be wonderful if it did, but it's probably not to get to the point where we can build the entire 3,000 student stations. Um, but we'll continue to bring back where we are, budget updates, 
and let you all make the decisions on how you want to so, proceed. So are you, are you looking for a head nod from us that it's okay to start at the lower number with the plan being there'll be an addition built at some point? Yeah. Board, what do you all? And the capacity with the two wings instead of the third wing is we're saying 2,300 to 2,400. 23 to 2,400. So the what does that do? Is Rhonda in the room? No. What does that do for us as far as projections with stu high school students right now and what our needs are in 2017, 18, 19? So my concern oh, yeah. is the ripple effect. Here, yeah, and what bugs me, it, and I, I don't have a problem with the delay. I just want to do the delay with my eyes wide open that we're not building the school on budget. We're building two thirds of the school on budget. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it's more two thirds. No, absolutely. But, yeah. So <laughs> that's why I actually yeah. asked for the statement to be yeah. restated. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I was tracking yeah. properly yeah. on yeah. the eighty-five that's million number. Yeah. And I don't want to move out of here today without making sure I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes, sir. Build a big school for less money <laughs> <laughs> with all the stuff we want. With all the stuff. With all the stuff. <laughs> and make it purdy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what, what I would suggest, Ford, and, and we're going through a transition with the superintendent. CFO will be coming on board. I would like to bring back and have Schenkel um, maybe condense some of the, what they brought today as far as the concept plans, the different uh, areas, and also to bring back for Dr. Pace, Mike, maybe an update on the programs that we're looking at to go in this. And let's get all of that information out there, and we will also talk more about the money. But. Well, I still ask that we get Sarah on board and and really let us look at everything. How, I, how big does that delay impact you? I mean, are you going to go home and sit on your hands for two no, weeks in? No. No, no. I won't. What, what Clive's suggesting all. won't hinder what we're doing at all. Not at all. What, so, what, which really is just slice that one building on or off, so you're going to yeah, design it anywhere. We'll we'll right. It it's anywhere. part of what we're providing for you. Right. Or I don't know if, that, look, if you guys all feel a certain way, that's fine. I, First of all, we don't need to wait two weeks, a month, or whatever to come back. I mean, we can get back together at our next, I don't know, when we meet again, March 1st, whatever it is. Um, I'd actually be interested to see a side-by-side -side comparison of, um, you know, Celebration, Osceola, Liberty, St. Cloud, Harmony, this school. Square footage is Square footage is cost, right. all-in yeah, cost, right. uh, student population. And I'm not talking about portables. I don't care about portables. Right. Just just brick and mortar. Um, I'd like to take all of this and just make sure that I'm looking at it in a good comparison from a historical perspective on what we've done, what we've spent, and what we've got. Um, and that would help me feel more comfortable with the decision. And then Rhonda, to be honest, I'd want to know also um, what that, what not doing that additional wing does for us and how that impacts us and what the ripple effect is. You know, we save nine and a half million dollars you only save it for a year. But do we really yeah. save it? Do we right. just kick the can down the road and create another problem for the next two years that we're trying to mitigate? Um, so uh, in order to give you the direction that you're available. asking for, for me, I, I would personally, you guys may not need it, and you might say I'm just overthinking it, but for me that $10 million decision is big, and what that ends up doing for us with regard to what we're trying to accomplish, which ultimately is student stations, you know, first and foremost in so many ways, um, I would need to see that information so I could feel comfortable. Well, the other thing when I was talking to Rhonda earlier that's important, or it changed my thinking a little bit, or just kind of the way, a 3,000 student station school, you cannot put 3,000 students in because every classroom does, just doesn't work that way. you got ESCs, you've got, you well, know, sure. microbiology, there's only 15 kids taking it. So, yeah. so 3,000 student station school is going to yield 2,700 roughly students and to get to 3,000 you're going to have to have portables for 300 kids. Right. So just point. kind of keep that in mind as you're thinking yeah. what, what you're yielding here is not what it sounds like. Right. So for me those pieces are important and I'll tell you the last piece goes back to what we alluded to earlier in talking with um, our delegation members and our legislators is I think it's incumbent upon us to really understand all the nuts and bolts of the financial implications of the decision so that we can stand 
uh, with integrity before those that we're asking for additional funds for and so that we understand exactly the decision that we're making, the cost that we're looking at, and whether or not we're spending money in areas or in ways that we really don't need to, even though it may be what we want. Um, and we know that just like in our own lives, in our own families, our own businesses, our own budgets, we want certain things, we plan towards them, and then we realize that maybe we have to dial back a little bit or we have to adjust. Um, that's at the point that we're at. The computer's about to restart. That's the point that we're at right now as well. And so I would just want to see all those final pieces so that I can feel comfortable. Well, like Mr. Washer, when we were looking at it, that's why we wanted to make sure today we were very specific about it. Um, Patrick and Joe and John and them, we've been very conservative. The only thing we've put in here is those programs that was requested. So when Patrick talks about, you know, we're going to try to make this look good, trust me, that's when we come to the realization that if we're going to make it for the 3000 then we're going to have to do something different on the money. Right. I mean, because, or, or we will gut any program out of there that we were ever going to put in there. Yeah. So that's, it's a, it's a, this, the decision is the time for them, but the guys have really been, they worked hard on that. I, st I still stand that this school is, is competition and it's competition about getting these people in that medical city area where it's growing and booming, getting them to build properties down here and uh, properties that indeed pay for themselves and contribute to this community. So I'm not, I wish it was not nine million, two million wouldn't even phase me, I guess. But I think this thing can have a return also. Yeah, you're right. right. So, well, and just so you guys know, and I, I normally say this, I feel like at every one of our meetings, None of what I'm saying, has, even what I was talking about with food service, and none of this has anything to do with anybody not doing their job. It's all of us continuing to do our job to make sure we come up with the best outcome for everybody. And the five of us have to make a decision how to spend $85 million of taxpayers' money that they worked hard to earn and that they've entrusted to us. And I know we all take that decision seriously, but ultimately the five of us have to make sure that we're comfortable in that decision and that when we spend it, we can say that we've turned every rock, looked at every opportunity, and analyzed every aspect so that we can feel comfortable we've done it right. That's my opinion. No, I, I agree. I want to get as much of the the stuff that we've talked about, and then if there's areas, excuse me, where we can shave that aren't as important, we shave it. Well, yeah. Also, I'd like to point out that at this stage in the design, of it, it's not unusual to be five to eight percent over budget we're doing it off of fuzzy drawings we don't have hard drawings to look at at this point it's a rough cost per square foot and that's you mean why your we're actual monitoring. cost to be five to eight percent over or your estimates to be five percent no, when, when we okay. when you're actual. in the schematic design <laughs> phase the okay. estimate to be five to eight percent over your budget is okay. not unusual okay that should be coming down as we develop the building that's why we have the cm on board and he can start giving it or they can start giving us uh, cost-effective design methods or construction methods to help lower that cost as we work through the process but we do want to we closely monitor that and we'll keep the board John, do we ever do at. we ever narrow that number down because if you take if we're seven percent on 75 million is uh, this is actually about eight percent right now over okay about. so if you're at eight percent on seven you're at five million dollars now we're down to four million dollars and you're getting something that I'm a lot more comfortable I, I do believe that the final cost when we get so, done I mean, will be less than Somewhere this. we need to get to what we know that number is. Do we get there in this process? We will get okay. there, the, and it's a process. <laughs> yeah. And no, I, it's I get really that. loose at the beginning, and that's where we are. And as we refine the building, we'll refine the cost also. I'd rather be having this conversation saying you're at 50, and then we end up at 85. Well, that's why we're doing it early <laughs> so, on. When, when it's built. Numbers, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. We, we, we feel we can get them down. So. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, if I may ask, just so I'm clear, um, March 1st we have a workshop and we will be covering the celebration, the discussion on celebration, and Dr. Pace had asked that we uh, go through growth for the county. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rhonda's team is working on a nice presentation, and it's quite possible Carrie Godwin from the county will be joining us and maybe David Tomac. Uh, but we'll hopefully have some county folks here as well. But um, a tremendous amount of things are going on, and we, we did a site cadre presentation last night, and that was really a brief overview to them of what we'll be bringing. But um, very interesting stuff. So I think that workshop's more or less filled up, and then we're having the second uh, 
at the second board meeting of the month, we'll have our workshop. And at that time, I thought we could. So that is a month uh, out. It, it is. That's a long time. Well, and here's here's my point, Clark, because I think it's, and, and this is what you need to be able to tell us, is all the difficulties of all the things you guys are having to navigate to bring to us. Mm -hmm. um, my concern, though, is a month. And my concern is, isn't spring break in the middle of the month? Mm -hmm. Like the 17th or something like that yeah. is in the middle of spring break. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do we don't, do we have a meeting? The second, no, the second well, no, we, just we don't, said. right? Yeah. It's the first, yeah, first. twenty second. second. And today is what the sixteenth. So could we just could we schedule a workshop at a different maybe Wednesday or Thursday, March second or third? I don't know. Or, what you is. know, or depending just on how, the, how much we spend on celebration at the next workshop. Well, I don't. What I don't want to do is have this in there too, and we just don't have time to do I, any I of it. Right? That's I'd a rather, lot of information. I would rather, and those are two pretty different focuses. <laughs> Would it be better to move the growth to the second board meeting? No, no. Well, she could do that. No, no, no. We need that before the meeting. Yeah, I, I think all Well, that's why. Right. What, what about right. having a workshop just for this, you know, Thursday or Friday? What if we did week? it like the last week of uh, or this well, Monday or Tuesday week. of the next week? I put you through. This. I'm, I'm good for whatever the board decides on that. I just sure. don't. I just don't think we can right. afford to lose a month. I don't think so. That's two, and it's more. It's more than a month. It's five weeks. Yeah. It's the sixteenth to the twenty-second. So I would say whatever the chairman and superintendent can work out, I'm fine with. Okay. Just tell me where to be, and I'll be there. Okay. Calvin, you okay with that? I am. Ricky. Yeah. Just wondering if Kelvin was okay. Why? You good? All right. Yeah. Because we care. I have to check my calendar and things. <laughs> so what? What are we? Yeah. We haven't stated. We'll, we'll take a look at the calendar. Okay, so we'll do yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess my, my feeling is I maybe Thursday. What's what day is the board meeting? Is it the first or the second? The first. It's the first. What about the third? While we're all sitting here, we'll be in. Yep, harmony, right? Be in harmony on that yeah, day. Yeah, we have a town hall. The following Monday or Tuesday. Maybe. Is that what it is? About Tuesday. Tuesday. About Tuesday at same time, same place, four o'clock, three thirty. I'm good. What do you? You saying March eighth? Yeah, Tuesday. Is that a yeah, Tuesday? I don't have a calendar. March eighth at four o'clock. <laughs> March eighth at four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that time enough for you guys to to be at your next step? It's three weeks. So. That's three weeks. Yeah. Shop, right? It's three weeks yeah. from today. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what we'll, we'll do is we'll, we can have analysis as a side-by-side -side comparison of, okay, liberty, celebration, harmony, and we'll have to have an escalation factor because they were built years ago. So we can apply to say what you know, today's dollars would be. We can give a comparison of costs and student stations to give you an idea for okay, how to four four again. Yeah, and I would like to see it both with and without the escalation. I just want to see the okay. hard costs. I can figure out the time value of money and we can do all that. That's fine. but. Okay. Um, Joe, may I ask what size high school Orange is building at two hundred and fourteen dollars? That's uh, twenty eight hundred student stations, I think. Twenty eight, twenty eight hundred. Yeah, it's smaller. Oh, it's than a Orange. big one too. It's I mean, a big one, and uh, where they is did. It? Is it on the west side? West side, west side of Orange County. West Orange. Okay. And it had a oh, is that the new West Orange? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And it had a million and a half for a fence they have to put up, and a few other things that was in that cost. And right now, Orange is suffering from local right. subcontractors don't want to bid because they're having to go out of state to get subcontractors that raises their prices. So Why they don't want to bid? You know, their program. Uh, they, they their their program, program manager or their consultant that handles right. their facilities for them is, has that. a reputation for slow. Uh, let's pay. be three thirty. And if it's okay with you three, we talked about having some workshops where we could have some general discussion too. Yeah. Is we'll do this first and then ex extend, extend a little Extend into a general like, discussion. Yeah. Sure. That's okay. So three thirty. You said not four. Three thirty. On, so that's on okay. March eighth. Would March you rather four? I don't. I mean. No, no, I don't care. Calvin, March chief is fine. I probably won't come. Three thirty. You want to make it three thirty or four? He's saying 330. 330? Yeah, let's right. 330, it. Joe. Y'all be up at 330, and then they'll have time afterwards for their stuff. Right. 330 Sounds to good. 9. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> if we do the open ended. Um, well, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate the update and everything. And this was uh, very critical that we talk about the money and 
yeah. uh, get the board on board with where we're at, and um, you know we'll get there. We're going to get there. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, nice great job. Tool. Appreciate you doing a great Just job, really there. capturing what we're looking for. I brought some print out. Is anybody want a hard copy? We'll be today. Yeah, Did you have that? I gotta tell you, the next time that would be a lot easier for me if I had that in front of me.